Hello punters and welcome back to, um, of course, a racing preview. Uh, this is the second of my previews after just doing the Caulfield card. Go and check that one out if you haven't done so already. We're looking at the Randwick meeting here. Fantastic card of racing. We've got the Group 2 Daly T-Rose Stakes for the three old fillies. We've got the Group 3 Bill Ritchie Handicap. The Group 2 Shorts, of course, with all the Everest contenders going around that race, as well as ones trying to gain a slot from the remaining slot holders. And the Colgate Optic White Wave for Age stakes over the 600 metres. And the Group 3 Kingston Town stakes over 2,000 metres. So a really good card to get into. Really looking forward to it. Let's just get straight into it. Uh, looking at the first race of the card, it's the Tab Highway race over 1,000 metres. Look at the speed map here. There's a lot of speed. I'd say Nitro Star, Magic Scent, Major Danger will be forward. Uh, I'd say General Scarlet, She's a Danza will, will be up there. So Phil the Knight might be getting forward as well. So looks to be a, bit, a little bit of speed on this race. And... As such, for me, I'm pretty happy to be with a horse here. Uh, and just, let me just get it back for you. And um, I'm, I'm pretty keen to be with number 14 here, Marikawa. I think it's massively over the odds for Glenn Boss and uh, Glenn and Markwell. Uh, sorry, Rodney Northam. Sorry, not Glenn and Markwell. I'm thinking of a different race. Uh, it was a little bit disappointing last time out, but it comes back to the 1,000 metres here. If it could do something similar to what it did to Scone, at Scone last time out, I think it would be much better off and... Um, last time out, I mean, they didn't really make a lot of ground from the back at Ramwick, um, and this horse is on a two-week two back up. It comes back here. I think it'll be much better this time around. It's drawn to get a really nice run in the race in behind the speed, and um, we'll be, should be able to come off that hot tempo and really finish over the top of them late. So I like it on top to beat number seven, Major Danger, who of the on-speed runners will, will be hard to beat. Uh, I think it's got some nice form, and the trial leading him was very good. So they give it a great chance to, to be uh, in for second. In for third, the other of the Danny Williams runners, Highway 66, will be back off the speed and be looking to run on late. I'd say that, uh, I mean, looking at form on I'm a Cool Kid and the Star 4 last preparation looks pretty good to bring into this. Uh, first up, off a long break is a little bit of a concern. That 1,000 metres might be a touch sharp, but uh, we'll, do, we'll get all the all the favours of the uh, speed being very genuine in the race. And in for third, number three, Phil the Knight, I think, it's got to deal with a wide barrier, but it's also resuming, and it showed a lot of uh, ability last preparation to be winning a race like this, so don't leave it out with Kevin McAvoy in the saddle. So recapping the numbers on race number one, the highway race, uh, number 14, Marikawa on top for me, to beat number seven, Major Dangerous, in for second, in for third, number th six, Highway 66, and in for fourth, number three, Phil the Knight. Moving on to race number two, benchmark 78 over 400 metres. Look at the speed map here. I'd say that Eugene's pick and Master Ash will get forward. I'd say Cuba will be up there. Condor will be close to the speed. So probably the, the four or five of them contesting the speed. And for me, number um, with the heavy track uh, conditions here, not, number six, Liz Devana, looks an appealing bet for me here. Uh, it was pretty good first up by a dance hall girl and since come out and won, so the form's pretty good there. Second up, uh, it's one second up before, um, off three starts second up and this horse loves a heavy track though. It's had two starts on a heavy track for a win and a place and uh, th those wins on a heavy track include uh, well, a while back in its preparation a second behind You Make Me Smile looks very good uh, and of course it, it has beat Seaway uh, prior to that so it's in good, some good form around that time and well, it's never won here at uh, Rose at Ramwick. It's had three starts for, for just the one placing. I think the heavy track will suit this horse nicely, and it's drawn to get a really nice run of the race based off the speed map. So I'm happy to have it on top. To beat number five, final award, who I thought was a little bit disappointing first up back in the field behind Rock um, on that occasion, but it had to carry 61.5. Gets a bit of a weight relief here. Comes down to the 58 kilos. Josh Parr in the saddle. They might be a little bit more prominent this time around. If, um, has never got through the heavy before, which is a little bit of a concern, but... Um, I mean, it's always a bit of a guessing game with that, but I think this horse, um, is, from what it's shown, it could probably get through the conditions, and I'd like to have it in for second. Uh, in for third, for me, number one, Murillo. I thought it was okay last time. It's got to carry a bit of weight this time round, and never been on a heavy track, which do, does give you a little bit of a concern, but it was very good buying ball last time out, and I think that's pretty good form to bring into this. Just got to carry the 60 kilos. That's the only concern for me. And then in for fourth, number four, Cuba, who... Uh, was very good last time out for John Thompson, who's absolutely flying at the moment. This horse has placed on a heavy before, so that's uh, a good sign. It beat Lifetime Quest last time out and has, has never missed a top three uh, finish from three starts this preparation. So it should be up to um, be, be, be close to the finish as well. Um, another horse I do want to leave out, I mean, Superstar Bob for Matt Dale is going to be heading towards a, a potential Kosciuszko second up here. And, um, there's never been tried on a heavy, but it might get through and might be a bit of a chance. Number 14, Touch of Mink, I think, has got a bit of a chance as well. Never been tried on a heavy track either, though. 
Uh, so for me, number six lives divide. I've got to have it on top based off what I've seen. I mean, it's a, a proven heavy tracker, and I think it'll, based off the, the run and the speed map, I think it'll be, get the perfect run of the race. So I like to have it on top of the $8.50, and $3 a place looks very generous. Uh, so I've got it on top to beat number five, final award in for second, in for third, number one, Murillo, and in for fourth, number four, Cuba. Moving on to race number three, benchmark 88 over 600 metres. Look at the speed map here. I'd say that Graceful Glamour might get a bit more prominent uh, like it last started. Didn't really get forward uh, at Newcastle. Oh, sorry, Wyong on that occasion it was. Re-edit off the inside barrel, probably jump and get close to the speed. Penske will, always gets out and runs. And Rodrigo probably won't be far off at all too soon. Or Ganza says, probably, could be a little bit of speed, but I'd say Penske should find the top with Graceful Glamour and Re-edit in behind them. Uh, for me, look, I'm pretty happy to take uh, number 11, Junipal, here. Really liked its last start when it was, so, um, sorry, its last start performance while in Silent Raw. It was so unlucky. Carried the 60 kilos on that occasion. And has to carry 56 and a half here. Uh, it's proven on a heavy. It's had two starts on a heavy track. And one of them was, uh, I mean, a placing behind Baccarat Baby in the Sunshine Coast Guineas. And then uh, prior to that, it, it won a, a group race uh last preparation so i mean this horse knows how to get through the heavy conditions it's only missed a placing once from six starts his preparation so i'd su suggest it'll be right up there and dollar 90 the place looks very very good and four dollars 20 the win i'm happy to take that as well so i've got it on top to be number nine a lift who i thought was massively over the odds this horse has gotten through the heavy before so the one placing on it this horse is a, is a group performer we know that and it was wild disappointing last night behind, oh, and uh foxy outside for wyong uh, I think the extra step up and distance will suit it much more. So it comes up to the 600 metres this time around uh, from the 1350, which was never going to suit. So I, I can see a bit of an improved performance here, especially coming onto the heavy conditions from it. So I like it at the each way odds of $23. In for second. Uh, in for third, number 14, re-edit. I thought it was a uh, pretty good last start behind Articus and comes onto a heavy track, which has one on before, second up here, but it's just it's drawn to get the perfect run of the race. It has 54 kilos, carrying back for the saddle. Gets that touch of luck, it's going to be very hard to beat. I've got to have it in for third. And in for fourth, for me, number 12 more to gain. It's massively over the odds here. I thought, uh, first up off a massive spell, 553 days, but I thought it was really good charging home late. That was on a heavy track. Second up stats are very good. So four starts, second up for a win in two, two seconds. So four starts at heavy for a win in two seconds. This horse is well over the odds, and I think that that run by Grayling is very good, and um, you wouldn't want to see it get too far back off Barrier 2, but gee, $41 and tell is a place, you could do a lot worse, and I think that's massive overs. Another horse I didn't want to leave out is number two, Rodrigo, it's had a, um, it's got some good heavy track stats, it's only ever missed a placing once from six goes on the conditions, so $71 is massively over the odds there as well, and Penske is a tr proven wet tracker, but not has never seen a heavy track before, so that's a little bit of interest to me, it's got to carry 61 kilos, uh, but It'll be up on speed, and if it's a leader bias day, it'll be hard to chase down. So, very open race for me, but I'm happy to have number 11, Juna Pal, on top for me. To beat number 9, Elithra, so I thought it was massively over the odds. Number 14, re edit in for, in for third. And then in for fourth, I like the chances of uh, uh, number 12, more to gain. I just thought it was massively over the odds. Not giving the chance. Uh, number 15, Master of Wine's got a bit of a chance as well. Thought it was really good last time out behind Map Maker. It just has never been proven on a heavy, but it's only got to carry the 53 kilos. The sort of barrier seven might be a bit of a tricky draw based off the speed map. I'm just not sure where it's going to end up in the run, uh, but it's definitely got a good chance down the bottom of the way as well. I just wanted to make a case for some of those roughies, so I just couldn't find Master Wine to my numbers uh, based off that. Moving on to race number four, it's the uh, 1400 meter Group Three, uh, sorry, Group Two Daly T Rose Stakes for the three year old filly. Look at the speed map here. I'd say that. Uh, I'd say Anahid will find the top. Uh, Libertini won't be too far off. Uh, interesting that Matty Rocks is still there. It's backing up off a, a run on Wednesday at Warwick Farm. So interesting there. Uh, Emeralds will be probably close to speed. Let it pour will be up there as well. So uh, for me, I guess find Anahid finding the top and uh, Libertini sitting just in, outside of her. And for me, look, she's hard. She's going to be so hard to beat. She's never seen a heavy track, which does concern me a little bit. But um, I'll, I'll look based off what we've seen so far. She's a big talent. I know she only just got the job done at dollar twenty last time out, but she'll be up there and she'll be in it right to the finish, and she'll be very hard to beat. But for me, number two, Anahid's worth a play here. It's proven on heavy tracks. Had a win on a heavy before. 
Uh, last start, it was only two lengths off exceedance and uh, was, ran to the line with Bivouac. And we saw Bivouac did last time out. So I think that form's really good. And interestingly, it comes back to Randwick. This horse has won, has had four starts this track for three wins. So I really want to have an A-trade player at number two, Anaheed. Uh, look, I am tipping Libertini on top. I think Anaheed's the bet to have here. So I'm happy to have it uh, in for second. In for third, number five, Funstar. As a proven horse, career conditions uh, was pretty good behind Yao Dash last time out. And has had a, a win on a heavy before, and this was, it was here at Ramwick, so Ramwick heavy. Uh, got to have make a good case for number five, Funstar, and for third. Uh, and then for fourth, for me, number uh, eight, Matty Rocks. Look, it's coming back off of a Warwick Farm heavy track run where it actually hit the line really well there. And the fact that she's backing up again, I've just got to give her a chance. I mean, there, there must be a reason Chris Wall is doing that, and it's just massive over the odds, $61 and $10 a place. Another horse I didn't want to leave out, uh, number 12, Emerald. So, I mean, this horse... They just finished behind Funstar last time out. It goes around sixty-one dollar odds. I mean, I know that Funstar perhaps had the, the more difficult of a run, but Emeralds was really good. And they do have a bit of a weight swing this time around. I'll, I'll concede that, but I just saw sixty-one dollars for Nash in the saddle. He's on absolutely. He's on fire at the moment. I think that was hugely over the odds as well. So I'm going to be playing it in as well. So very good race here. Now for me, number one, Libertini on top, but. I'm going to be having the bet on number two, Anna Heat, each way at $12 and $2.80. The place that gets well over the odds. Uh, in for third, number five, Funstar. And in for fourth, number eight, Matty Rocks, I mentioned, uh, backing up. And the other also I want to give a chance to number seven, Subpoena. The other Chris Wall horse has got has got a bit of ability and I've had a bit of time for. And number 12, Emeralds, I mentioned, is also over the odds. Uh, so it's a real open race here. And I, I think while I can see Libertine is the one to beat, I wouldn't be backing her at $1.85. Uh, so I've got her... As my on-top selection, but I wouldn't be backing her. Race number five, over 400 metres, Group 3, Bill Ritchie Handicap. Look at the speed map here. I'd say Archidemus will find the top with Avantage. Uh, Desert Lord might be able to bounce out and find the top. I want to see Colding not be too far off the speed, and my expression might use Barrier 2 to get prominent uh, as well. But for me, look, uh, I think that based off uh, the fact that it'll be getting close to the speed, number three, Avantage will be hard to beat as long as... James McDonald doesn't get caught three wide. It, it'll, it'll be extreme out of bounds. I liked its uh, second, first up at Rural Kaka over there in an open race. Its second up stats are excellent. I mean, it's had three starts, second up for two wins and a placing. It's one here before, of course, came to last preparation. I mean, look at its form. I mean, it beat Razin in a, in a Phillies Mayor's Group 3 race at Rose Hill. Then it came to Ramwick on a soft track and was 1.7 lengths by Sleek Legend, who goes around the shorts as, as one of the favourites. I mean, that's very good form. And this horse gets through the, any conditions. It's never missed a top three finish. So for me, $5, $15.95 the place. Looks a very nice bet to have, and I'm going to be having it on top. For, to beat number six, Star of the Seas, who does get through the going. Uh, we know that. It's th three starts on heavy track for three wins. thought it was very good resuming behind Dreamforce, who stole that race there at Ramwick. And, and of course, it's a Group 2 race. Comes back to a Group 3 here. And but onto the heavy, good each way play as well. Uh, so I've got it in for third. In for fourth, number five. Uh, sorry, in for, in for second. In for third, number th five, Colding. Uh, never seen a heavy track before, but it was very good behind Dreamforce. It was the real unlucky runner of that race. And uh, was specced in that race to, to run a good race, and it, it did so. And second up here, I think it'll be much improved. Uh, so I've got it in for third. In for fourth, number seven, Cascadia. And I think this horse got a lot of ability, and it closed off really well last time out behind Deprive. Uh, Deprived since gone on run pretty well as well as Trope in that race. There's only a length behind them and uh, recent uh, trial was really good at Ramwick. Has, has had four starts on a soft track for two wins at a place. Never seen a heavy but it does get through the wet conditions so for me I want to give it a good chance in for fourth. Uh, look I left number four Archidemus out but it, uh, for, for Quaddies I'd definitely be adding it in. It was disappointing first up but it does like the wetter conditions and it gets that here so I can see an improved performance if it's allowed to run out in front for Glenda Mark or Luke Curry in the saddle. So recap the numbers for me, uh, and also number 12, Desert Lord. I can't give him a, um, without a chance. He's two from two, second up, and he was pretty good first up uh, behind Grey Worm on a heavy track, uh, but, um, and he's right down the bottom of the weight, so I can give him a bit of a chance too. Just couldn't find him in my numbers, but race number five for me, number three, Avantage, just, just looks really hard to beat, and I think $5, $15.95, the place a nice each way play. To beat number six, Star of the Seas, who loves the heavy track. Absolute swimmer. In for third, number five, Colding. And in for fourth, number seven, Cascadian. With, as I mentioned, uh, Arch Archidemus. And also Desert Lord are ones I'll be watching out for late uh, there as well on the heavy track. 
Moving on into the shorts, it's the Group 2 uh, shorts here, over the 1100 metres here at Randwick. Look at the speed map, Red Zell, he'll bum along from the inside barrier. I'd say Classique Legend will go up and join him. Uh, of course, Sunlight's been scratched, a bit of speed comes out of the race, home of the Brave might get forward as well. But for me, look, he's hard. I know that what, what we saw from Parada last start was very good. Uh, but this horse, he just continues to do it at, at, at uh, Randwick on a heavy track, so... While we stay on this heavy track, uh, I've just got to be with him, number uh, number two, Redzel. I loved his last start win. I gave him as one of my best bets last start, and he didn't let me down. I, I was really worried about Parada fra flashing home. But for me, Randwick, heavy, he gets through it, and you've just got to go with that as a, as a proven performer on the conditions. And uh, he's paying pretty good for a place as well. I mean, he's paying... Um, He's paying $1.55. I think that's not too bad. He's into $3.70 now after Sunlight came out. So for me, I've just got to have him on top to beat number three, Parada, who charged home late, and he was a real eye catch. That was a sensational run first up. Second up, stats are good. He's never missed a top two finish, so I think he'll be doing that again. He obviously gets through the heavy conditions like we saw. Um, like we saw. And But for me, Red Zell coming off a good track onto now heavy. He's just going to suit him much better. And, but I think they'll be the top two. Number four, Osborne Bulls. He'll be charging in late. He's proven on heavy track as well. He's great fresh. So four starts fresh for three wins in a second. I think he'll be charging home late. His trials have been very... His recent trial at Rose Hill was absolutely terrific. He's had uh, four seconds... Uh, five seconds in Group 1's last preparation. So he'll be well on the finish as well. I'll give him a great chance. And number six, Classique Legend. I mean, this horse is... Uh, I think it's a real talent. And from what I've heard during the week, I mean, he's... He really did, has been trying the house down. He had a really good track gallop on the heavy track. So the suggestion that he'll get through it uh, is, is right there. And he'll be right up on the pace as well next to Red Zell. So I think he'll be finishing off nicely. But for me, they're the four to beat. And I think that I can't really see too many others getting close. Graff will obviously run a good race like he did last time out behind Parada and Red Zell. So won't be leaving him out either. Uh, he's probably the other one that could uh, give it a bit of a shake. But and in her time, I mean, she's resuming. But... Uh, the heavy track for me is a little bit of a concern for her, but um, yeah, she'll be well in the in the finish while she heads towards an Everest uh, also. But for me, number two, Red Zell on top, just got to go with him on the Randwick heavy. He's just the specialist on that sort of conditions and at that at the track. Number three, Parada in for second, in for third, number four, Osborne Bulls, and then in for fourth, uh, number six, Classique Legend as well. And as, as I mentioned, a bit of a watch on Graf and in her time. Uh, race number seven here is the Group 1 Wage for Age Colgate Optic White States over 1,600 metres. Looking at the speed map here, I'd say that uh, Dream Force will get out and run again, as will Summit out, so they'll be contesting the speed. Angel Truth, though, will probably kick up and give them something to, to, to run after. Happy Clapper will be sitting not far behind them. I think he'll be... And it'll be interesting to see they do the Villiers this time around. If they ride him cold at the back or if they take him forward uh, and do what they've been doing last preparation with the risk of being three wide again. But, look, I'm jumping off him... Um, oh, I know that this is probably when he'll win Avilius, but for me, I've just got to go with uh, number 11, Very Elegant. Down the bottom of the way, it's James McDonald in the saddle. Uh, loves, uh, it's absolutely loves a, a wet track. It's had three starts on a soft for two wins and a place. He's had two starts on a heavy for two wins. I think he'll much appreciate coming back onto the, the heavier ground. And Second up here, I th he's, he's two from two, second up, including I mean, last preparation, he won on a heavy track, over 1,500 metres, he beats Seabrook, and he absolutely smashed them that day. So a similar run to that, we'll see him win, uh, go very close to winning this. So I think $6.50 and $2.10 is a nice price to take. So I've got him on top to beat number two, Avilius, who comes on a heavy track. He's had two starts on a heavy for two wins, so I think he'll get through the conditions much better. He was Look, he was beaten fair at square by summing out last start, but he was three wide no cover the entirety of the race. And he, he, he didn't even drop out. He still made it a hold on for second. I thought that was a good effort. Um, and he's, that was his, uh, he's only missed a placing once uh, here at Ramwick from four goes, so I think that he'll be right up in the finish once again. Number one, Happy Clapper in for third. I mean, he uh, can also, he's not really known for getting through the heavy conditions, so that's my only concern with him, but his recent trial was very good, and he, of course, uh, only just finished buying Summit out last uh, time out. That was um, not last start where Avilius came second. It was the one prior. He did beat Avilius home on that occasion, but... Comes on a heavy track here, which is a little bit of a concern for me. But I've got him in for third, based off class. And in for fourth, number eight, Dan Dance Dance, the New Zealander. He, he'll get through these conditions, and he's probably been overlooked in the market. I think $3.50 the place is a nice bet. He's had uh, three starts on the heavy for a win and two placings. And last preparation, I mean, look who he finished by. He finished 2.7 lengths, two lengths by Navilius, and he finished uh, 0.3 lengths by Melody Bell at, at uh, Ellerslie. And he, uh, of course, ran behind Winks in, in the Group 1 Winks. 
uh, over 2,000 metres there. So, And he was very good resuming. I uh, thought he didn't have a lot of luck behind Melody Bell. And he came from a long way back in the field. So he'll be coming home late, and I think he's a great chance to be a knockout chance at the $14. Uh, so for me, look, number 11, Veli Allegan, can you give her one more chance and on the heavy track? I think she'll be much improved. Uh, in for second, number two, Avilius. In for third, number one, Happy Clapper. And then in for fourth, number eight, Dance, Dance, Dance. I've mentioned, I've, I've left out uh, Sam and Out and Dream Force, but uh, for me, it's a different kill of fish. But um, Dream, look, Dream Force, he'll be uh, in the finish. I don't know about that. His second up stats are excellent. He's only ever missed a top three finish once. Uh, and but he's uh, he's had the two starts on heavy fist to one placing. I just think that he won't get as easy to run this time round. But I do respect him. So uh, of the others, he's the other one that goes in there. I'm leaving some of that out. I think coming out of the heavy might get him unstuck this time round. Uh, race number eight, and it's the two thousand meter Kingston Town Stakes for the Group Three here race. Uh, come play with me. Fabrizio Stampede will get out and run early, and I'd say that'd be the ones that will lead the race. And Finch will be just in behind them. Uh, but it's not, all, not a whole lot of speed here, and uh, as such, as such, I do think number eight Stampede might be hard to beat. Uh, comes on a heavy track, which it absolutely loves. He's an absolute dead set swimmer. Uh, Adam Prionimus, he's been in some terrific form, especially for Gay and Adrian. And um, I just think this horse will be much improved off its last start at, at Wyong, where it sort of tailed out off the speed. But coming back on a heavy track, he's paying nine dollars and two dollars ninety the place. So I'm happy to be with him on top. Uh, especially later on the day where the track will be quite choppy. I think it'll be hard to make some ground. So I've got him on top to beat. Number one, Shah Roa. He's got to carry weight, but, gee, he's over the odds. I mean, he was, he was obviously very disappointing first up in a, in a group uh, two race by Samad out. But his second up stats, he's much better. He's never missed a placing second up. Uh, he's had two win, two starts on heavy for a win and a placing. He's had four starts here at Randwick. I never missed a placing once, and that, of course, was last start. I think the extra distance stepping up now to the 2,000 metres is going to suit him much better. And he's just massive over the odds. $34 and $10 a place. Definitely having each way to go there. Number five, Red Cardinal, who um, actually scratched that because he's now going to be running at Newcastle today. So forget that one. Number four, Finch in for third for me. Uh, I'll bump them all up. Thought he was pretty good behind Summit out last start. Uh, he's never been, he's only had the one crack on a, on a heavy and he's, he didn't place on that occasion. He's had three starts for only one third. So. Second up, so I mean, not the most appealing, but he is a very qu good quality galloper. Of course, he finished fourth in a Melbourne Cup, uh, so you got to really respect that. Uh, kind of form and third in the Geelong Cup, so he, he's got a lot of ability, but he's definitely looking for further. And but I still think he'll run a good race, and he'll be in, in there for third. And then for fourth, number eleven, come play with me. I really like what I saw last time out, and uh, he's he's proven in the heavy conditions, and he rarely misses a, a top three finish. So I think he'll be up there again. I just couldn't play him this time around at the 3-0's 80. Thought it was a little bit short. So recap the numbers for me. Number uh, 9, Stampede on top for me to beat. Number 1, Shah Roa. In for, sec in for second, in for third, number 4, Finch. And in for fourth, number 11, come play with me. Moving on to race number 9, 1,200 metres, benchmark 88. Looking at the speed map here, there's lots of it. I'd say uh, you make me smile. Piracy, prime candidate, will all get forward. Bolero King will get forward. Uh, don't give a damn. Usually, likes of uh, Shabbos Toe, Sweet Scandal, and Grey Worm will be up there as well. So a lot of speed on here. I think it'll suit the back markers, and uh, my top pick is one of them. And it's number four in Rahir, and I think he'll improve now coming back uh, off last start. He was a little bit disappointed on that occasion, but he um, he had a trial recently, and prior to that, I mean, he, he won well on a Ramwick on a soft track, beating improvement there. He comes on a heavy, which I think is even better. He gets the speed on. I think it'll be very hard to beat ahead of number thirteen, Prophet's Thumb, who. Uh, look, I do concede on, on top of the ground, I'd be putting him on top here, but he was very good last start. He was only 1.4th by a partner in a group two at Mooney Valley, the 1,000 metres. He gets out, uh, she sorry, she gets out to the 1,200 metres. going to be much better. Steps back to a benchmark 88. Just a bit of a question on her on a heavy track, but, gee, she's got a lot of ability, and if she can show that here, I think she'll be very hard to, she'll be well in the finish. Uh, number two, you make me smile in for third. Uh, it was pretty good on pace last time out. It was only just run down late by Grey Worm, but... Uh, I, I thought that was a, a nice run, and I think uh, it'll be up in the finish again. Number seven, Grey Worm, for fourth, as I mentioned. Uh, did beat you, make me smile last time out, and we'll, we'll be right up there again, and he'll be uh, he'll be well in the finish as well. Number six, Improvement, I'll give a good chance to. Uh, of course, this horse has won on a heavy before, and was pretty good first up off a massive, like, near two-year break behind Rahir, and so, I mean, uh, and had a recent trial that was very impressive indeed, so... Got a bit of a watch on this horse as well. I wouldn't be leaving it out of uh, my first fours or quaddies. So recap the numbers on the last of the card at Randwick. 
For me, look, I'm going to have uh, number 14, Rahir, and on top to beat number 13, Prophet's Thumb. In for second, in for third, uh, number two, You Make Me Smile, and in for fourth, number seven, Grey Worms. So that's the card at Randwick. Uh, hopefully, you you, uh, you have plenty of uh, winners tomorrow. Looking through, I forgot to do this at Corfield, and I keep forgetting to do this, and I, I do apologise, but... My best bets for the card, uh, look, you can still go ahead and have a look in the descriptions and you can have a look on my social media page and find my best bets. But uh, looking back through the card, I look, my best, uh, look, I, th I think race number three, number 11, Junipar, I think you'll be very hard to beat at the $4, $20, 90 the place. So I've got it on uh, as one of my best bets. Uh, the other one that I think, I think number two, Redzel, I think he'll be very hard to beat. He's my other best bet in race number six, number two, Redzel at $3.70. Uh, best each way plays. Uh, for me, race number seven, number 11, very elegant at the $6.50 to $2.10 the place. I think it'll be running uh, in, the, in the top three for sure, and I obviously think it'll be winning. And in the last race of the card, number 14, right here, and at the $5.50 and $2.10 the place. So good luck for following tomorrow. Uh, go check out my previous video at Caulfield if you haven't done so already. Uh, and keep an eye out, I'll be doing it around the track play. It'll be a very short video of uh, my best bets at Morphophil and Eagle Farm. So good luck if you're following tomorrow. And, uh, of, of course, have your black books out. We'll be seeing these horses going on further, especially out the shorts heading towards an Everest. So really looking forward to it. Uh, good luck if you're punting tomorrow, uh, of course. And if you're following me, I hope we'll get plenty of winners and, uh, I guess, yeah, return to form after a pretty disappointing week last week. So um, we'll very... Very disappointed with our Saturday form last week, but I think a lot of punters got burnt last week, so we'll be looking to get back on track here, and I'm sure we can do with a bit of value and a few best bets. So good luck if you're following tomorrow, and enjoy the races tomorrow.